Vintage versus modern speakers. Mm -hmm. Dave in Braintree, Essex, England. You guys in England have some amazing brain tree? <laughs> Look, there's a brain falling off the tree. Hi, Paul. I very much enjoyed your book, 99% True. Well, I thank you very much. Um, I listened to it on Audible, and at 14 hours, yikes, it was quite a marathon, I'll <laughs> but all good. Will your new book, The Audiophile's Guide, be available on Audible as well? Uh, no. No, I thought about that. Here's the, the Audiophile's Guide. You can see it's kind of a, a large eight and a half. This is, this is, this is the Audiophile's Bible. If you want to set up a stereo system and get the most out of it, if you want to have your speakers disappear, if you want to get the bass right in your room, then you need this book and the associated SACD. The, they're, 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 they are together. I designed the whole thing together. That, that was originally why we did all this, was so a guidebook and a companion um, CD. So, no. And the reason is um, the, the book, you can see, look, what we did is we made it large so that you can open it up and have it sit there. Well, it's not sitting there, but if, I don't want to wreck Gus's book. If you fold it out, it'll sit here. And, and there are diagrams and step-by-step -step instructions. So it would be really hard to listen, you know, like, ah, do this, and then try and remember what the, the, the narrator said. Because here it's very specific. Go to track three, look for this, set up your system to do that, and get this result. And then I'm going to tell you, if it doesn't work, you're going to go back over to, over to this page, and you're going to, you know, so it's almost impossible to have that, that, uh, that work their way. It just, it, it just didn't make any, and it's not, it's not a book, like 99% True is a story, right? And, and it's fun to listen to a story or a history or something, but this is an actual guidebook. So the Audiophiles Guide, not going to be available um, in, in Audible, uh, and that's why because it's, it's, a, it's an actual guide book that you need to follow this, do that, you know, okay. Um, where are we? What is your opinion regarding vintage loudspeakers? Uh, can they sound as good as modern speakers that use modern materials and techniques? I'm thinking particularly about bookshelf speakers that seem to pack a lot of punch for their size compared to larger and older speakers. That's that's an interesting question, and it's, it's a hard one because some of the best speakers ever made are vintage speakers. Look, look at my Infinity IRS-5s. They go back to 1985. Sorry to say, <laughs> for some of you, 1985 is now considered vintage. I mean, to me, it's like yesterday, right? Yeah, the old shits. But uh, I, I listen on vintage speakers, and today, those IRS-5s, are hard to beat. Very few modern speakers even come close and they use all of those modern materials. Having said that, modern bookshelf speakers and smaller speakers using modern materials really pack a lot. So like for instance when we do the the new FR series, the full range series from PS Audio, we uh, use all these modern materials, new, new uh, oh, split bobbins and, and uh, exotic um, uh, magnet materials and all of that in service of lower distortion and longer throws, but to do it in a slim cabinet. So w with the IRS-5, we didn't face those problems and still don't because if you've got 132 drivers that means that you don't have to have the individual drivers be spectacular because they're just loafing. Each one's doing one 132th of the, <laughs> of the work. So, uh, you know, take those, uh, 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 there's 12 mid-range drivers on the IRS. So just as an example. And if you were to take one of those mid-range drivers and compare it to the mid-range driver, the ribbon mid-range driver we're using in PS Audio's new FR30 loudspeakers, our, spe our driver blows that away. I mean, the amount of technology and 
advancements that have gone into modern driver technology that will be in our speakers blows that away. But we only have one driver, so it has to be low distortion. It has to be linear, where in the vintage speaker, at least in the IRS, it didn't have to be because you're, each driver is only doing one twelfth of the work. So it's just loafing. That's how they got away with it. Some of the best speakers I've heard, um, JBL corner horns, for what they do, phenomenal, just great. So it really depends on the vintage speaker. But if we just talk about bookshelves, oh yeah, modern speakers blow away older bookshelf speakers. It's just when you get into the big exotica, the, the big JBLs, the, um, the big infinities, their vintage rocks and rules. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later.